people steal and forge and breach. Let me even go there because I have mine forced it. Everything I think there. Good morning and welcome. Liturgy should be very familiar, but every once in a while it is very challenging. Today is one of those wonderful, challenging days. So I'd like to share with you the beginning portion. You each have your poem with you. At the blessing of the palms, I will say, please raise your palm, and you will raise it. We'll have the blessing of the palm, yours and all of these up here. And then when it's time to sing, I'm going to ask that we occupy. I have you on this side, and you, Louise. <laughs> Louise, you have this side. So then I will wait. Louise will wait. You'll come out on the inner side, and then you'll follow your person all the way to the back. And then you'll just keep on going back to your seat. So it's just one loop around. Um, are there any questions with that? Good. Okay. And there's no rush. <laughs> oh, really? And if you want help or need help walking, just ask somebody or do whatever you're comfortable doing. Anything you do today is just wonderful. The fact you're here is the true blessing. Please stand. We begin with the liturgy of the palms. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. 
If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna in the to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil. Who is this? The crowds were saying. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Please raise your palms. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us a sign. Be, let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Raise your psalms who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us sing all glory, laud, and honor. Bless the Lord.
forgives all our sins. It is mercy and yours forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. A reading from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spoon. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 31. <laughs> Please read responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They deliver their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your love of kindness, say to me. The second lesson is a reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taken the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please be seated for the reading of the Passion. Now Jesus stood up, sorry. Where have Suzanne is coming forward to help with the reading of Jesus. Thank you so much. <laughs> And all parts that don't have a name, a special name attached, that's you as a group. You are priests, you are crab, you are everybody. Thank you. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Yeah. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas, Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. You know how his wife? <laughs> we have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let, Let me be crucified. Then he asked, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Say to it yourselves. And the people as a whole answered, is his blood 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 blood. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, the king of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they Thanks. offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who have destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. 
He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This, this man, man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save us. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth <coughs> and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. It then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, so, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Open our hearts, O oh Lord, to perceive anew this day the depth and the mystery of the good news. Amen. Amen. This is the day of the palms. Jesus enters Jerusalem and the whole city was in turmoil. Everyone was asking, who is this? Not just who is, who is here. But the one on the donkey is taking the place of a prophecy that talked about the Messiah riding, conquering on a donkey in peace, bringing the King of God. So of course they asked, who is this? The answer was, this is Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. There are enough clues there that people were understanding that God's mighty action was happening. Jesus from Galilee. 
We start with Jesus taking action in his own hands, and we end with what appears to be Jesus relinquishing action and dying. But for now, it is the palms, and Jesus is seizing action. Victory, the king of king enters. This is triumph. Many people in the crowd saw it that way, and they took palms and escorted Jesus the roughly three miles slow journey into Jerusalem. We know one group, at least one group, was more than just thrilled. They were ecstatic. The disciples are thinking to themselves, finally, we thought this would never come. Every time you asked, we asked you, you denied it or you gave us some circuitous answer. Finally, finally, this is the time when the kingdom of God will arrive and we will be part of it. We, the disciples, have earned this the hard way for the past three years. Surely, in their hearts, they believed that this was the ultimate action of God. Well, later, something very different will occur. The disciples of Jesus were also thrilled because the Messiah position has been now made public. Prior to this, very few people knew this Messiah story. And in the Gospel of Mark, the major theme in Mark's Gospel is no one can know ever when this secret will be revealed. If you have been healed, you remain silent. If you have figured it out, you remain silent. Now there is no more need for silence. This is the time to shout, Hosanna. This is the moment of God's victory. No wonder there was such great confusion when they arrive in the temple and when those Hosanna cries are changed to cries of horror. This is the great reversal at the heart of the gospel. The great reversal in one liturgy when you are asked to praise and then kill in one sitting. The great reversal, Pilate, the Jewish leaders, and the people all speak together. Guilty, crucify him. 2,000 years later, we ask ourselves, guilty of what? Guilty of blasphemy against the Jewish law. Guilty of treason against the Roman law. But the disciples knew more, or they thought they knew more. As the situation devolved and continued to become worse and worse, it was the disciples who were nodding their heads saying, guilty. They weren't shouting it because it was a different kind of guilt. Guilty. You are guilty. Mm. Jesus, you are guilty of breaking our hearts. And so we, like Peter, will run and hide. We will deny that we even know you. You have broken our hearts. We believe the promise of, that the kingdom had arrived. We believed that we also would be a part of God's plan, a whole new reality. 
We believe that he shall reign forever and ever. Alleluia. And we also have been crushed and betrayed. Jesus' arrest confirms this despair of the disciples. The mock trial, the brutality, the questioning with no satisfactory answer from Jesus. The red robe, the crown, the very weak reed in the right hand that really couldn't do anything. Flip, flop, flip, flop, some king. A question and answer enters here. Who is this? We just heard the crowds receiving Jesus saying, this is God's prophet. Question and answer now. This is a fraud. This is some kind of cult leader deceiving us. Imagine the complete and utter despair. Those who appear to be silent, at least in this part of the gospel, are the women who, was clo who were close to Jesus. But now, it is all a tragedy, a wreckage. The love and the relationship between Jesus and his followers, most of them, appear to be destroyed. The deep friendship of the disciples with Jesus appears to be its own mockery. Maybe it's okay, Jesus is mocked because Jesus is mocking us. In Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, he said to God, I don't want this to happen. I beg you to take this cup away from me. Oh my. Goodness, is there any place in this whole story where we can just sit on a rock and smile? No. Both sides. Why have you forsaken me? And by the friends of Jesus, why? Why have you forsaken us? For today, for us believers in our time and place, we own a complicated legacy. It's not easy. What is easy is to be tempted to jump to next Sunday. I can already hear the hymns in my head. I cannot wait, Suzanne, for the joy of next Sunday. But holding to today, even in the light of the resurrection, today's story seems complex. In the light coming from the empty tomb, we might think everything's going to change in a heartbeat. But hearts our hearts, the hearts of the early Christian church, were still experiencing terrible pain and persecution, loss and loneliness. And they heard the cries of Easter, Hosanna in the highest. But they also said, where are you, O oh Lord? I, you, and believers through the years struggle with our doubts and fears. It is impossible facing some experiences and the spiritual 
confusion, not to cry out, why? Why? And maybe that's okay. Maybe our cries of why are beseeching God for something that we cannot see being answered. Maybe that's okay. More than any other liturgy, this mixture of victory and glory mixed with defeat and tears. This is what St. Paul had to help the earliest Christians with. And so he wrote in Philippians, Philippi being the birthplace or nearby of Alexander the Great way, way north in um, what's that country? Greece. Way north in Greece. Okay. The church at Philippi was a blessing to Paul and it also broke his heart. He saw how those early Christians struggled and were not able to hold on to the promise. So when Paul, after multiple trips and preaching and being with them, Paul is called off to Rome where he is waiting to be killed. And he writes one last letter to the Philippians. And he said, don't forget this. Whatever you do, don't forget this. Jesus did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. Rather, he emptied himself. Totally not one drop left. Taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness, Jesus humbled himself even to the point of death on a cross. Maybe Jesus was active not just on Palm Sunday, but through the entire story of the passion and the resurrection and then right into our stories today. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and share our sacred story in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, Begotten, not made, for born being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and according to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and for the light of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That every old lady 
grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our bishops, Michael and Daniel, and all priests and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joseph, our president, and Josh, our governor. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief, trouble, or an illness, especially those on our prayer list. Yeah. Colleen. Dorothy. Jane. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That like the breath of the dying Father. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. On this day, we pray for those people around the world who are experiencing violence, deprivation, persecution, and we ask God's mercy on them. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God, we confess the sins against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and can only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Almighty God, forgive your sins and fill you with joy at a new beginning. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in God's peace. Thank you, Mary, for the announcement. Oh, you have a helper. Don't I have you? a helper today. <laughs> Two helpers. <laughs> Let's not forget. Um, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Reverend Linda, for being with us today. Um, we, sorry, the announcements. So for Holy Week services this week, we are um, invited to St. Paul's in Chester. They're having a 7 p.m. Maundy Thursday service and a 7 p.m. Good Friday service. St. James in Prospect Park is also having Maundy Thursday at 7 p.m. No, I'm sorry. St. James is actually at 6. 6 p.m. And St. Paul's is noon on Friday. So everybody ignore the bulletin. We are going to post it online with the correct times. But basically your choices are 6 p.m. Thursday in Prospect Park or 7 p.m. Thursday in Chester, 12 noon. In Chester, is St. James having a Good Friday service? Yes, St. James is also at 12. At 12. So basically, either church is just St. James. You'll get out a little earlier at 6 p.m. Okay. Um, we're going to have our Easter egg hunt next Sunday, which is Easter Sunday. Um, Lindsay couldn't be here today, so she asked that if you have any candy to just leave it. Um, her and Lynn are going to stuff the eggs um, this week, so there's no stuffing of the eggs today. Um, please do keep Lynn and in your prayers. Her best friend um, passed away, uh, but she's 
having a hard time with that. So, um, our designer bag bingo is coming up on Saturday, April 29th. How many tickets have we sold? 50. 50 tickets have already been sold, so we're almost halfway there. Um, we still have plenty to sell, but they could sell out if you want to go, so I would get by. Um, and the, we've started the Little Dresses for Africa program. There are patterns um, to make very simple dresses um, or shorts. Guys, guys. And if you want to make uh, the Sandy Panty, which is a reusable um, feminine product, uh, we do have batting because that is the most expensive part of making it available. Um, it was donated to us. <laughs> this Tuesday, we'll be handing out 20 Easter dinners as well as it's the first Tuesday of the month. So we expect all 20 of those people to be asking for toiletries and groceries. Um, Carol um, and the Varises are scheduled for Tuesday. Are you all going to be here? Okay, but it, it's not a bad idea if anybody would like to come and help out because 20 people is going to be a lot and toiletries is a lot. I'll be there, um, my mom will be there, Sharon will be there, but still just getting the dinners and everything out is a project too. Um, and I think that's it for announcements. Um, do we have any birthdays or anniversaries? Anybody need a healing prayer? Anybody want to pray for these children uh, every day, all day? You're <laughs> welcome. Pray for me. Yeah. All, day. all right, come on, guys. We're gonna. Oh, uh, you lost the shoe. Okay, we're gonna go sit down. So, um, you want to come up? Do you mind doing healing? Oh, I didn't think you did. Healing prayer. I will mention before the healing prayer that if you know any neighbors or anyone who would be pleased to receive these blessed palms, please be generous. We're sitting up in the middle of the Do you think that's all right? How would they get them? Sure. Sure. Um, and meanwhile, you all know people, so we would be sure that some people would receive. I know, I have neighbors. Do I have neighbors with 300 people around me? Oh, yeah. Take some. I, don't worry, I'll take some. Okay, is this for healing? Yes. I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ to surround you with his healing power, with his joy and strength, that you may be delivered from distress and renewed to serve him. Amen. I lay my hands upon you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, beseeching the Holy Spirit to surround you this day, to fill you with strength and courage and trust that the Lord is walking with you and is present through all things. Amen. Amen. Let us now offer to God all that we are, all that we have, and all that we long to become.
and all the Lift up your hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that we might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. After, therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, 
and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and Saint John the Evangelist and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us be the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, ever creating and recreating, the Son, ever speaking truth and love to the world, and the Spirit, ever renewing our lives in service, be with you and your loved ones today, throughout this week of holiness, and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, God. God. 